Go Jackers. What is going on, everyone, and welcome to Rec Talk. I was this close today. It, believe it or not, I was this close to coming out with a video that was titled In Defense of Miami. I know. I'm the dummy on that one. Most of the Miami people I deal with on YouTube, I really like. I love Fools. I love Coach Coop. I don't deal with Coach Coop, but I love his channel. Slim, you know, I talk to on a fairly regular basis. And usually Slim is reasonable about Miami. Coach Coop picked him to go 7-5. and five. But every year, preseason, Miami is like Hall of Fame preseason national champions. I talked about it uh, before this season and last year. What was Miami ranked 15th in the country? They're so great talking themselves up preseason saying they're back. They convinced uh, the rankings people, I guess. They were preseason 15 last year based on jack all nothing. All right, so I'm prepared to come out with a video in defense of them. And then I see this. I made the mistake of going on Twitter. I'm the dummy on that one, too. This is now that, you know, they've looked at the elbow down, was it a fumble or not, which I think is their strongest argument. It's not a good one, by the way, but it's way better than this right here. ACC refs, this worse than the fumble play. They're trying to say that Christian Leary should be ruled down right here on the, like, half-yard line per the slide rule. Let me say that again. They think Christian Leary should be ruled down right here per the slide rule. Now, I will tell you this. I did learn something. Evidently, any player... Any ball carrier can give themselves up per the slide rule. But they need to be feet first. It needs to be obvious that they're giving themselves up and they're going feet first. Is any of that happening right here? I mean, my God. By the way, look where they're getting this from. They're getting this from a troll account, Ball Sack Sports. Miami fans go to ball sack sports, and there's a little bit of, oh, we didn't really lose it, though. I mean, this is almost like um, when you're in a relationship and the woman just keeps cheating on you. And, and you're, it's, the writing is on the wall. It's so obvious. She's out every night. You know, she smells like a man's cologne when she comes back in the morning. She's getting calls at 1130 at night. But you're just looking for any reason. No, it's not true. It's not true. That's what Miami's doing here. He's not feet first. He's not obviously giving himself up. Why would he be giving himself up in this situation? It had rained cats and dogs all night. He lost his footing a little bit in the end zone. This is a touchdown. What in the world? What in the world are you talking about? And I've been on a tear on Twitter. An absolute tear. Because I can't let this slide. Yeah. I can't just take a knee and run the clock out on some of this. Uh, much like Mario Cristobal. Let's talk about that, too. This, um, it wasn't a fumble. His elbow was down. Let me switch screens again. Whether he was down or not, uh, when I initially watched it, I thought he was down, and maybe he was. 
it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That game was 100%. Mario Cristobal could have guaranteed that never happened by just taking a knee. If you didn't know, under 40 seconds, no timeouts, taking a knee ends the game, guaranteed. One timeout, under a minute 20, and two timeouts, under two minutes. That's it. So when Mario says, uh, I don't, you know, they had to recalibrate. I just laid it out for you right there. Just laid it out for you. That, that's what it is. Could have just taken a knee. When you tempt the football gods like Miami did, and he 100%, in my opinion, was Pat Statting. It's the only thing that makes sense because Mario is not a stupid guy. You don't get to be the head coach of a big-time Power 5 program and be dumb and not know what these rules are. He wanted to get Cheney 100 yards rushing. Or he wanted Cheney to break through and score again so the win looked a little bit better because they thought they were a playoff team this year. Most of those fans were saying 11 and 1. By the way, 11 and 1. Look at their schedule. Let's say that they did take care of Tech. Let's say they beat us by 60. Look at the rest of their schedule. Next week, they go on the road, North Carolina. Come back home and play Clemson. All right, Virginia, NC State, whatever. They got to go on the road and play Florida State and they got Louisville at home. It's four pretty tough games. I mean, I know Clemson isn't what they generally are. But even if you took care of Georgia Tech, you're not, you're not just losing one of those games and then taking care of business with everybody else. And I hate to say it. I hate to say it. I think Miami... Miami is the most delusional fan base in college football. You don't say you're back for 15, 20 years straight and not be back and also not be the most delusional fan base ever. Talked about it on the live show. They're also saying um, there was some conspiracy you know, we've seen this before, hadn't we? More with pro football, but now but now Miami's taking uh, that narrative. It's scripted. These refs are horrible. Uh, they clearly um, favored Tech in the conspiracy for them to win. Let me tell you something. And you know I'm telling you the truth because I'm dunking on my own team by saying this. Georgia Tech has zero, like, relevance fan base nationally, like outside Atlanta, the city of Georgia. No one cares about Georgia Tech outside of that. So what would be the benefit of conspiring for Georgia Tech to win that game? Unreal. And I hate to do it. I know you guys have been asking where Slim is. I hate to do it, but I got to. Um, on the ACC show last night that – was, was hosted on the Sea Dog channel. Slim says it's only dumb if, uh, because they lost, basically. So let's take a listen. I don't think Mario's a bad coach, but it was a dumb decision to not take a knee there. I mean, it's clear. only a dumb decision. It's only a dumb decision because it worked out the way it did. Was Nick Saban the uh, the second worst coach in all of college football because he did the same thing Saturday. Well, I think the situation was slightly. Pete's right. The situation was not just slightly different. It was different. Now you just not misquoting him. He said it's only dumb because it didn't work out. Now I stepped off the panel because I didn't want people to just be inundated with my with Georgia Tech stuff. It's the ACC show. I can read the room. So I sent this super chat in. Uh, Rack Talk, 
he sent a super chat and he says, for Slim, saying not taking a knee in that situation is only dumb if you get beat is like saying playing Russian roulette is only dumb if you die. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's dumb regardless of the outcome. Well, no, that's not the argument I made. I said he's consistent. He's consistent about it. He doesn't ever take an A. I'll let you be the judge what argument he made. You can you can rewind that. You see the timestamps there. I'm not taking the man out of context. Uh, he did say it's only dumb if um, it doesn't work out. So the reason I was going to come out with an in defense of Miami – was because I want to tell you, I want to tell the Miami fan, I know how you feel. I know what it feels like to root for a team and feel like um, a jilted lover. They keep breaking your heart. You keep making excuses. Well, it was on me. You see this with fan bases. It's the fans' fault. That's like in these bad relationships. Well, if I just would have loved her enough, if I would have loved Tech enough, then maybe things would be would be different. But I can't defend this lunacy. If you think Christian Leary should have been ruled down there, um, you're football stupid. If you think that loss was in, on anything other than your own head coach's decisions, who, by the way, in the press conference right after the game, did blame his running back. 100% he blamed his running back. He said, you know, he shouldn't have fumbled the ball. Nah, he shouldn't have been in that situation. Then, I think yesterday, Monday, he trots his OC out to kind of fall on the sword because the OC comes out and says, yep, yeah, you know, I called the play. So are you taking responsibility for it or not? Now, this is all besides the point. On the ACC show, Pete made a good point. And uh, look, I'm I'm as guilty as anyone for contributing to to this, but it never should have been that close. All we heard all week was how great Tyler Van Dyke was, how garbage Georgia Tech was. All they were worried about was how many points they were going to score, how many passing yards they were going to have, and how many injuries they would get out of the game with. And Tech came in there and hit Miami in the mouth, especially defensively. That's what happened. Miami or Georgia Tech hung around, made enough plays long enough that when your coach made a bad decision and put put the game in the refs' hands for y'all, we were ready. You know, you still had a 97% chance of winning that game after the fumble. Did you know that? 26 seconds left, we had to drive 75 yards. I thought we were playing for a field goal. Try send it to overtime. We're only down by well, what? 3 it was 17 to 20. You went from 99% chance of winning to 97, even with the incredibly stupid decision. We, we were ready to make a play. We made plays when we had to. That's what happened. Um, now, that... Uh, doesn't compute with Miami man's narrative. Like there's still Miami fans that are going to say they're they're a playoff team this year. Now, every undefeated ACC undefeated team other than Duke, they play, but it doesn't matter because North Carolina is going to put up. Speaking of putting up sixty, that's what uh, North Carolina is going to do uh, for you. I wish I could defend you. I wanted uh, to make amends because we were similarly heartbroken over similarly bad losses. But uh, nah, I'm good. Y'all have a good one.